What do red nose readers do? Well, um, how about I sing you a song about it? That would be great. It's an echo song. That means you have to repeat the line I say. You have to echo me. Okay, okay, yeah, just like that. I'm gonna say red nose readers. And then I have to say red nose readers back? Yeah. Are you ready? Here we go. Red nose readers, red nose readers, here I am, here I am, reading silly stories, reading silly stories. Let's be friends, let's be friends. Kids, are you doing it with us? Red nose readers, red nose readers, here I am. Here I am, sharing smiles and laughter, sharing smiles and laughter. Let's be friends, let's be friends. Red nose reader, red nose reader. Here I am, here I am, spreading joy and kindness, spreading joy and kindness. Let's be friends, let's be friends friends. Wow, that was amazing, Lucy. So red nose readers share a love of reading. Yeah. And joy. Yeah. And laughter. Yeah. Hey, what story's on the menu today at the Garden Cafe? What's it all about? Well, it's about worms and apples. <gasps> I love worms and apples. Oh my gosh. That reminds me of a joke. Can I tell it? Go ahead. What reads and lives in an apple? What reads and lives in an apple? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> it's a bookworm, silly. Hey, guess what? I got a worm on my belly button. See? My belly button. I love my belly button. I love to change my belly button. So I have a lot of... Lucy, yeah, we're not talking about belly buttons now. Oh, yeah. Well, I got another joke. Okay, why don't you tell it to us? Okay, it goes like this. What's the difference between worms and apples? What's the difference between worms and apples? What do you think, kids? What's the difference between worms and apples? Hmm... I don't know. <laughs> oh, have you ever had a worm pie? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Lucy, what? Those aren't very kind words. Some somebody might like worm pie out there, and 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 you might be hurting their feelings. So you have to use kind words to say I don't like something. Oh, I don't care for it so much. That's much better. You know what? All this is making me really hungry for apples. Well, do you know what? I have an apple for you. You do? Yeah, right here. <gasps> it's beautiful. Can I eat it now? No, it's for after we're all done with our show. Right now, I'm going to have to have you go down in your little black bag so I can read the kids a story. Uh, but I, I want to eat my apple now. No, I'm afraid that won't work. It'll get your bag all kind of gross and, and yucky, and I, I don't think that's a good idea. I know I can apple sit it. I promise. I promise. I promise. I I won't eat it. 
I'm afraid you might. I have an idea though, just a minute. I have this little box here. It's empty. I know. We're going to put the apple in it. Okay. 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 Here we go. Here we go. I'm putting it in here. I'm putting it in there. Whoa, look at that. She's putting the apple in there. Yep, I am. I'm going to close it. How come? So you don't get in it. Oh, and I'm going to put a little sticker on it. Oh, no. Yep, right there. Oh, you can't get in that now. Um, I promise I will not open the box. You promise you won't eat it? I promise, I promise, I promise, I will not open the box, okay? Okay, tell the kids, see you later. Tell the kids, see you later. Lucy, Lucy, I, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. We're not playing the echo game. We're not playing the echo game. Lucy, uh-oh, that means I gotta do it. I'll see you later again. I'll take my box. I promise I won't open it. See you later. Bye-bye. You know, I don't trust her. I think she just might eat the apple in the box. So I'm going to have you kids out there keep an eye on it. Keep your eye right on there. And we'll make sure that she waits till after the show to eat it. So here we go. Can you still see it? I'm going to read our book for you today, and it's called Bad Apple, A Tale of Friendship. And it's by er Edward Hemingway. Now, for you big kids out there, Edward Hemingway is Ernest Hemingway's grandson. Uh, the story takes place in an orchard. That's where the setting is. The characters are apples in the orchard, and the main characters are Mac, this apple here, and this little cute worm here named Will. Bad Apple, A Tale of Friendship. Oh dear, I need to put on my reading glasses. Sometimes people need reading glasses to be able to see. Oh, I can see you guys really good. Hi, everybody out there. Oh, oh my gosh, there's a whole bunch of you. Oh, it's good to see you. Oh, I better get reading. Mac was a good apple. He shared his toys with other apples, helped Granny Smith pick up after our class, and loved to dive fearlessly into the watering hole. On a sunny day, Mac could bob for hours. Oops, can't see the box there. On cloudy days, Mac would search for the perfect pillow of green grass and take a long nap. In his dreams, it was always sunny, but one day, as Mac lay sleeping, it began to rain. Soon, all the little creatures in the earth around him poked their heads out to look for higher ground. Some of them found safety under the large toadstools. Others crawled onto stones and pebbles, but one little worm had another idea. When Mac woke up, he was covered in raindrops, and he wasn't alone. You won't believe the dream I just had. A funny little worm was tickling me right here. And now I can't seem to get him <laughs> out of your head. It was you. And that's how Mac and Will became friends. Will showed Mac how to fly a kite, fly himself, and play in the dirt. He loved making a mess. Mac took his new friend to the watering hole to clean off. He couldn't remember a better day until he took Will to the orchard. Look at Mac, <laughs> he's got worms. Mac's a rotten apple. I'm not a rotten apple. Quite sweet actually, so they left. Will cheered Mac up by reading about some of his favorite novels. He was a bit of a bookworm. Mac liked the adventure stories the best. He also liked it when Will finished his sentences for him. The most exciting part is when the 
pirate finds treasure in the dirt. But the next day it happened again. <laughs> it's a bad apple. Ew, worms. And no one in the orchard would play with them. Not even the crab apples. Bad apple. Crab apples can be so mean. That night, the two friends sat alone on the grass without saying a word. In the morning, Will was nowhere to be found. But he found scratched in the dirt a little note. You are a good apple, Will. Mac went back to playing with his orchard friends, diving fearlessly into the watering hole, painting in Granny Smith's class, but nothing was the same. Look at he just kept thinking of his little friend, Will. There was a hole in Mac that couldn't be filled. Not a big hole, just a teeny tiny little one. You know, a small hole just big enough to fit. And nobody finished a sentence. Look how sad he's looking. But look at one of these orchard apples. Look at the look on his face. I wonder if he's feeling kind of sad, about, bad about the things he said. Mac had to find Will. He searched low and high and in between, in the dirt, around the watering hole, and just when he had given up all hope, he looked up in the sky. He saw a leaf kite up there. Oh, did he used to fly by this way? He followed that leaf kite. Where did he come to? There was Will, reading books. Mac knew he'd rather be a bad apple with Will than a sad apple without him. I was hoping, <laughs> help me turn the pages. How did you know? Because you'll always be a good apple in my book. Good and happy. And there's nothing bad about that. I think this is a wonderful book about friendship, but you know, those orchard apples were very, very unkind to Mac and Will. Um, they said some really mean and hurtful and rotten things to them. And I think it really hurt them. Um, maybe it didn't look so on the outside, but I wonder how did they feel in the inside? Let me show you. I have two apples here with me. Let me set this right over here. If you look at these two apples, they look pretty much the same, don't you think? Can you tell me some things? What do you, how, how do these two look the same? What do you think? Oh, if you said they're red, you're right. They're both red. Yep, they're both shiny. And they're about the same size. And the kind of apple that they are is called a delicious apple. Let's see what happens when I talk to them a little different. You are the ugliest apple I've ever seen. You're rotten inside. You're filled with worms. Oh, you are disgusting. I'd never eat you, and none of my friends out there would eat you either. And if they did, they couldn't be my friend. You're ugly. You are really beautiful. Oh, you're the nicest looking apple I've ever seen. You're red and shiny, and I bet the inside of you is just crisp and sweet. I bet you are delicious. You would make the most wonderful apple pie. Now, if I put both of these apples back together, I talk to them differently, but they still look the same on the outside, don't they? Let's see what happens on the inside when we say different kinds of words to them. Oh, look at this apple. 
This apple is just beautiful on the inside. It was juicy. There's juice all over here. It's got a nice fleshy color. Oh my goodness. This would be the perfect apple to eat. A delicious apple. And I think it knows it's beautiful. Let's see what happens to the apple that I said mean things and rotten things to and hurt its feelings. Oh no, look at that. It's got rotten spots on it. It's bruised, it's hurt. The unkind words and the rotten things that I said to this made this apple not feel very good on the inside. The outside it might have looked okay, but on the inside, not so good. Boys and girls, that's what happens when we say unkind things to other people. On the outside, it might not look like it made a difference, but on the inside, people are hurting. We need to remember to use kind words so we make people feel good and beautiful on the inside, like this apple. Hold on a second, I've got a little friend to bring to show you. Just a minute. I'm coming. Oh, right here. This is my little friend, Macintosh. Kind of like Mac, but his, his name is Macintosh, and he doesn't talk. But he has a best friend that's with him all the time. I'll see if I can get him to come out. Can, can you come on out? Yeah, it's okay, because all the kids are out there waiting for you. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's okay because they're our friends. They wanted to see us today. They want you to say hi to them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at all the kids out there. Macintosh, look. We got some friends with us today. Hi, kids. It's me, Wilbur the Worm, and this is my best friend, Mac. We love doing stuff together. We love reading and we love crawling in the dirt. I love, I'm a crawler. I like to crawl in, in Mac and I Tosh here and I love to crawl in the dirt too. And you know what? I like to fly kites just like Mac and Will did. And it's leaf season outside, so it's perfect for flying leaves. Oh my gosh. We're just the best of friends when you're the best of friends. Having so much fun together, neither one of you sees your natural boundaries, cause you're the best of friends. Life's a happy game, we can clown around forever, we're not even aware we're such a funny pair, cause we're the best of friends. Oh, boys and girls. It's so great to be good friends. And remember, friends use kind words with each other to make them feel beautiful inside. And Macintosh is beautiful inside. Bye-bye. I'll see you. See you, kids. Hey, hey, did you forget about me down here? Hello, hello. Did you forget about me? Lucy Lou's down here. Hey. I didn't forget. Oh. <laughs> Hi guys, how are you doing? Oh. Well, is it time yet? Is it time yet? Is it time for me to get to have my apple? I guess it is. Oh, I'm so excited I could cheer. Hey, that reminds me, I know an apple cheer. Can I do it? Can I do it? Yep, go ahead and do it. It's an echo cheer. Oh, no. No echo cheers. Huh. You know, because you take things a little too far sometimes. Not me. I promise. Okay. I'll give you, I'll give you a chance. Okie doke. Give me an A. A. Give me a P. P. Give me a P. Well, 
open the box? Okay. Just a sec. I'm trying. Hurry up! Hurry up! I'm hungry. I'm really hungry. Lucy? How did you, how did this box get open then? Magic, Lucy Lou, magic, and magicians can't tell their secret. So, Lucy, I think we'll talk about this. I think it's time for us to say goodbye. Yeah, we do need to say goodbye, but we're gonna still talk. Yeah, and I'll sing my goodbye song. Now's the time to say goodbye. Say goodbye, say goodbye. Now's the time to say goodbye to all my Red Nose Reader friends. Bye-bye, friends. Love you, and I'll see you next month in the Garden Cafe with Ladybug. I'll see you, kids. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye, Lucy. We're going to talk about the magic. Say goodbye to the kids. Bye, kids. I'll see you, and I'll find out how she got in that box. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.